Welcome to the Growth Whisperers podcast, where everything we talk about is about building enduring great companies, awesome companies that go for a long time. And Brad and I take a lot of pride in helping people to build those awesome companies. Um, I'm Kevin Lawrence here in just outside of Kelowna in a place called Peachland, British Columbia today. And Brad, my great friend, is down under in Perth, Australia. Brad, how is the day so far? It's pretty good. It's off, off to a very good start. It's quite early here in the morning. And uh, yeah. yeah, things are well, well. You're how about starting you? and I'm, I'm good. I'm wrapping up my day. A very busy uh, day today. It's a Monday I'm recording this and it's just a full on day since 8 a.m. And we're now at uh, 4 p.m. and a couple more hours left. And yeah, it's good. Good. Let's get into so, it. Yeah. So what's the what's the word or the phrase, the thought of the day? What do you what do you got? Uh, so there's this. There's this thing going around called quiet quitting, right? Now, when I was a lad, we used to call it just slacking off. I was off. a lad. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we used yes. to just call it slacking off, right? Yes. But there's this, uh, there's this, I'll call it a movement in a very loose and disrespectful way uh, where people, <laughs> they've, they've mentally quit their job, but they're only going to do the absolute bare minimum. And I, I, I recently w was kind of looking at that and, and, and learning a little bit about that. So yeah, um, quiet quitting, not, uh, not a positive thing, but when you manage people, you can manage the minimum higher, perhaps. What about yeah. yourself, Kev? Well, mine was flexibility. And, you know, working with entrepreneurial companies all the time, things are always changing. Yeah. And if you like a straight lane and predictable everything, yeah. working with entrepreneurial companies isn't a great thing because there's all kinds of stuff where you got to be on the fly and ad lib. So, yeah, flexibility. I'm reminded, I'm, I like flexibility. Yeah. And I'm, I was reminded because one of the CEOs that I work with, um, we're chatting the other day, and he doesn't like to make decisions unless he has to. Or, or constraining decisions. Yeah. He likes to let things roll and see how they work out, which allows a lot of flexibility. So flexibility is very different than your quiet quitting because flexibility is also great for team members. You can work from home. You could work, you know, in the office. You could work, yeah. you know, you know, however you would like to. So people love flexibility in lots of ways. Mm -hmm. Some people don't. But those, those, those quiet quitting people have way too much flexibility in those companies if they can get away with that. That's a whole other thing. So we want, you know, we want flexibility, not to the point of quiet quitting. So what are we, what are we, what are we jumping into today? What are we talking about sharing examples and yeah, what, what, what do we got? Well, what's the right size for a leadership team? Or put another way, is your leadership team too big? Um, maybe your leadership yeah. team, or is maybe, it too small? Or maybe it's yeah. too small. Maybe it's too small. That's it. You know, it could be. Maybe your leadership team is just you, and you're the genius with a thousand helpers. Um, but what's the size of a leadership team? Sometimes, you know, we can get into some rabbit holes of awesome problems where a new person comes on, and maybe part of the deal is that we'll give them an invitation to join the leadership team or we're forming a leadership team and we think, Oh, we definitely have to get Mary on board. You know, she's in an area where yeah. we need her. So what I guess we're trying to do is to, to, to take away the personalities and just talk about some of the dynamics of a leadership team, yeah. how they work. And yeah, maybe is yours the right size? And, and it's basically, what do you need? What do you not need? And it's it's really interesting because now we, let's make a distinction between words that we use. Of it. I would say, and everyone's got their own, but what I call an executive team uh, is the direct reports to a CEO. Mm -hmm. That's no, so, so you could just call them CEOs, direct reports or executive team. Leadership team is that team Plus, usually a handful of other people that are either super valuable contributors to the discussions and decisions or in a department that is really critical. And so basically, the leadership team is generally the CEO's direct reports plus a few of those people's direct reports. Yeah. And it can range from you know, 7 to 25 people, depending on how it goes in that group, that leadership team, they would normally be involved in your annual strategic planning and your quarterly planning reset meetings. 
They might be involved in your longer monthly meetings. Sometimes that group morphs to be the in the weekly meeting with the CEO, right? Not always. Sometimes the CEO has an executive team only meeting, but sometimes that larger team. But this is the core thought leadership decision-making team of the business. And for sure, they're together at the quarterly and annual strategy meetings and plus some other strategic things in between. But don't get hung up. I suppose for listeners, don't get hung up on the the the, the naming. It's yes. more, think about the people who are making the decisions, the key people, they come together as a group. What is This is talking about the functionality of that group. And, yes. and do you get to a point, too small or too big, where it's a kind of a problem around that. So yeah, and I'll start with this, like too small. Like there's one, you know, company that I saw and that that leadership team that made all the decisions was two people. Yeah. Yeah. In an organization of the size that they were, it was absolutely too small. It was very efficient. And that's the benefit that you can deal with everything. Like, you know, if you two and I, you know, if we had a company with, you know, 400 employees and you know, you and I were two key people running it. We could make all the strategic plans and do make all the decisions insanely fast. But it wouldn't, yeah, it'd be very efficient. It wouldn't be very effective <laughs> yes, because yes, one, yes. we'd have a lot of blind spots in an organization of a few hundred employees. Two, the people doing the work wouldn't have any buy-in and would just feel like we're telling them what to do. Yeah. So there's, so we know two is logical. Yeah. The challenge is it sometimes starts swelling towards 12. 15, 22, yeah. where these teams become really big and cumbersome. The problem with a really small leadership team, let's say two or three people, if depending on the size of the business, is that you might not reach out to all of the corners of the office, if that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. So so let's say there's you and the sales manager who, who meet up and you form your own small leadership team and you make the decisions. Well, the people in operations or marketing or accounting may not have a hand in that. So you want diversity in the leadership team so that you can kind of get some information, let's say outside of the ivory tower or uh, some information that's kind of from around the business. Yeah. So you make better thoughtful decisions, number one. Yeah. Two, and there's two things, making the best decision you can and two, getting buy-in. And there's two separate things that you're trying to achieve with that team. Yeah. And sometimes they're biased too much towards just efficient or good decision. And sometimes they're biased too much between alignment and getting everyone's buy-in. So we'll, we'll get into that. But I'll give you an example. So um, one company we've worked with for quite a while, and our leadership team has grown and shrunk over the years. There's Because there's no perfect answer. But generally, we've got about 11 or 12 people. And I'm looking at our annual meetings and our quarterly meetings. It's a very transparent group. It's not a group down in the U.S. Very high trust. Uh, and, and generally, for 90% of 95% of the work we do, that team comes together and does the strategic planning uh, and makes a lot of the big decisions. Now, sometimes we bring extra people in for alignment. So I think actually the core team, I think is, I think it's nine, but mm -hmm. often it'll be 12 because the CEO likes to invite different leaders in on a rotational basis. Right. The key is that when they invite them in, they say it's, you're coming for this meeting. Yeah. They don't expect to always be part of that team. Yep. Once you've invited someone onto that special decision-making <laughs> team, telling them they can't come to a meeting is like kicking them off the island in Survivor. Yep. And there's a lot of drama. We actually, this has happened a few times, but we lost uh, an executive after that. They were, sorry, a, yeah. a, a, direct, a director. Oh, they, yeah. It, it, it's the a CEO massive did point. it last minute. It's a massive, massive, almost insult to them. So once you invite them on, it's very hard to get them off. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, so you want to be sure if you're inviting someone onto a leadership oh. team, that's, that's for sure. Yeah. And, um, and my the, default is invite them on a, to come for one or two meetings and yeah. say it's a one or two meeting thing. So you have an automatic exit because it's super hard to manage. And next thing you know, they're there because they were there not because they need to be there. If you're going to have a leadership team, that team you just mentioned, they were 11 or a nine as a core swelling to 11. Was that right? Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, so, 11, 12, 13 sometimes. Yeah. So nine is 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 kind of uh, is is large, I'd say. 12 or 13, obviously, if you're jumping in and out, that, that's a slightly different scenario. But if you've got 10 or 11 people, um, you, you know, you had better be running highly effective meetings because... Yeah, well, I, uh, be, what are you questioning my ability to run a meeting? No, <laughs> no I'm like, talking no, to but the they, audience. But they, have a, they, they have a first... I know, I know. They have yeah. a facilitator though, like... The, when you get to that size, you need a facilitator to run the meeting. The problem is it takes one of the executives out if they try to do it, and it takes a fair amount of skill and technique. And and so as a facilitator, when I'm running the meeting, I've done thousands of them. I can easily run a meeting with a dozen people. Yeah. What we have to do is to just, there's for a lot of really critical discussions, we got to break up into smaller groups because it's hard to have a hearty discussion with 12. The yeah. three outspoken people will want to speak and and even the conversation slows down there's too many people to have productive conversations so we often split up and then come back and it's funny because the group doesn't like to split up yeah. it's like splitting up the family dinner and you know there's the kids table and the adults table well it might be okay with kids but when you try and put the adults in two separate rooms it, 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 there's resistance yeah so you got to go against gravity almost and split people up to go and do it but but it, it it can work but it's if you don't do it it's a very challenging meeting to run to make it effective uh without yeah. without, without an outside facilitator yeah it, you have to be effective um so i have a book coming out on the first of november it's called onboarded and in there i talk about this problem as a team grows uh, the complexity increases. Because if it's you mm -hmm. and I talking, Kev, we've got two points of communication. If we add another person into this conversation, mm -hmm. then we've got six points of communication. Okay. Um, so you and me and me and you, for example. And then so you grow that and you grow that. Those points of communication, once you get to about 10 people, you just, the the because those points of communication are exponential rather than linear if that makes mm. sense like they just keep growing yep yes you can't keep up with it you can't keep it's, up with that it's very it, it becomes the, the the each additional person makes it notably more challenging yeah and makes the meeting longer because yeah. it takes more time yeah so so it's it's that yeah so it, it you're dramatically increasing the difficulty of having an effective the, the, the of having an effective meeting there's two of us on this podcast imagine if we had nine people on this podcast it'd exactly. be it'd be really so difficult. much better no <laughs> yeah yeah it'd be really no, difficult be. to get effective outcomes it is but the, the distinction is it's a combination of making the best strategic decision yes. versus making that and getting a lot of alignment and for a lot of companies we work with getting some additional alignment uh, is there's value in that. So we'll, we'll give up a little bit of efficiency to get a little more engagement and alignment. Like another one um, that, that we work with, you know, at one point we had 24 people on the leadership team. Wow. Yep. Yeah. Now, based on the size of the business, it might've been a little much for that size, but based on the size of the business and what was going on, um, it wasn't, I think, for the intent, it wasn't wrong. But there was another one that had thirty. But that's you know these are notable. But that's a you know, speaking things. engagement. I'm sorry. If it's not. 30... It's not. No, we ran them. We ran them like strat planning sessions. It was breakout groups. But big that's the only way. The only yeah, way. Of the well, only way you can do you can't it. Can't have a discussion. But but it was constant breakout groups. And when we did that one on Zoom, it was breakout group after breakout group, and it it. It worked with a little bit of strategy and a lot of execution. But in that group, yeah. we ended up getting the CEO's direct reports to do separate, really deep strategy and to take a lot of the input from this group and boil it down and get to the final place. But you've got to, in, it takes a lot of it, like the amount of prep we had to do for those meetings. Yeah, to engineer it to make it work. So in that case, we've got a group of five that that is the direct reports, basically the CEO, 
who are the executive team that does the deeper strategy. And we just had like a, a two and a bit, a two day session just on that. And then the rest of the team comes up and picks up that strategy and builds it into execution and has some strategic debates. But it's they've in that at, at that size they've set, they've rebroke it down to what used to be the strategic planning meeting to it's like the execution meeting where the strategy is done outside it with a smaller team yeah. and they've had to basically create two meeting rhythms to be effective with with that and it for them it works really well it's just a lot of engineering when you want to involve that many people. Yeah, for sure. So it's a bit, it can be a slippery slope as well. So imagine if you start yes. off with a leadership team of six people and then you grow and you're successful and then you need to bring on a new role that you didn't have before. Oh, they'd absolutely yep. get an invite to the team. Okay. Yep. So then let's go six months or a year down the track and you bring on a new person, senior person as well. They got to get an invite to the team. And so suddenly you can blink your eyes and you've got 10 people and the meetings are slightly dysfunctional. So you've got to, as I said, it's a slippery slope and you've got it to is. know. And that's how this company used to have eight. Yeah. A, a decade ago, there was eight, but as they've grown, those additional, you know, well, you know, the other VP is there. Well, the other director is there. And all of a sudden it's like you get too many. Yeah. And so, so there's, there's lots of examples and we've got lots of companies that, you know, like if you said we're going to do some strategic planning with a with a uh, with a leadership team and there were six people, yeah. it's a walk in the park. Yeah. As a facilitator, it's notably easier. It's faster because there's less points of data to align and make decisions with. And again, when you get up to the twelve, which is very common for our medium sized clients, it's just harder. And it's it's harder harder to pull off effectiveness. Yeah, it's harder to get the results that you need. There's a team that I work with in Sydney and that slippery slope is what has happened there. It's They started off with one and they brought in a new and it's just suddenly it's gone. Now I think they've got 11. And you kind of said it's it gets harder, but what you see intuitively happening is, is there is a core within that group that's emerging. Yeah. And it's like, well, we're bringing the other people on because we feel obligated to because of their either seniority or they're already on the team mm -hmm. or something like that. So, yeah, it's it's I, I tend to agree with you back there. I tend to think that if there's a sweet spot, it's probably six to eight people. So that's ideal. That's and there is a place for 14 to 16. There is. You're just yes. going to have to engineer the meeting a lot more, do more pre-work. You're just. You're just you're make, creating a lot. There's a place for it. I, I've got, but I've got but a bunch of clients. I have, have another to... a, a client in India, and we have like the last one we had. We had it in Bombay, and there was there was sixteen. So when you go to breakout rooms or breakout tables, depending if it's in person or yeah. not, you're going to probably go into groups of five to eight people in each of those breakouts. Yeah, five, like five, five or six. Yes. Yeah. You, you just you engineer the meeting differently. And again, in that one where there was eighteen. Yeah. The 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 three brothers that uh, run the business, they're awesome. Um, that I work with there. Uh, we had a we have a street a strategy meeting beforehand to map out the high level and get things clear, and then we bring it to the team to to get to get the strategy finished and alignment. We've pre prepared because otherwise it would be too challenging. Yeah. Um. The point is that humans work effectively in that space. So yeah, you can have a yes, large. And you're, I get your point though. I get your point. In those environments, you break them down into group of six, which is an easy team for hearty discussion and debate. Yes. And so if you're going to have more than let's call it the six, you're likely going to have to break into groups. So you get back to the six. Yeah. So like in my other clients in US, that's a great point, Brad, is that yeah, if you do more than six, you'll have to break down into groups that are you know, around six, if you're going to have hearty discussions. So don't expect to have 12 people in a room and be highly effective unless you're using something like breakout rooms. Yep. Um, you're, you're going to have to manage and understand that. It's not impossible, but it could be too big to get them all in a room and expect them to work through an agenda in a highly effective exactly. manner. So um, Jeff Bezos, you, you know, he uh, he's at a relative degree of success. And he said that everybody in the firm 
needed to assemble around what he called the two pizza rule. So yep. what that meant is that if a team was working late and and they couldn't be fed off two pizza pies, then he uh, mm. said it's too big. Um, yeah. So and depending on your appetite, <laughs> that's a maximum of probably six ish people. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and that's and, right. and so there's some mass behind that. Yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of like the, the the summary I would give for today. It's basically, you know, healthy discussions happen in groups of about let's say six, right? On average, five, seven max. And if you're going to have more than that, you just kind of have to engineer it, and you're making it harder for yourself to manage to run that meeting. Well, if you as a facilitator, it makes it harder for the person that you're paying to do it. So maybe it's not so bad, but you're going to have to likely break up into those smaller groups to have effective discussions and then come back to the main group is, is kind of the thing here. So is your leadership team too big or too small? Well, we don't know. That's up to you. But if it's larger than six or seven, you're likely going to have a hard time having the discussions you need to, and you're going to have to break up into smaller groups, whether it's within the meeting or a separate, smaller, super strategic group outside of the meeting. Yeah, yeah, indeed, indeed. Um, so a couple of podcasts that are related to this one you may be interested in. Episode 92, the monthly leadership team meeting. Episode yep. 77, the curse of being on a great leadership team. That's a cracker, that one. Uh, and episode 24, how to get leadership teams to think strategically. So is your leadership team too big? Well. That's kind of on you, I suppose, but uh, there is certainly some human dynamics that you can't ignore that may mean that you need to change things around. So, Kev, uh, good chat today. I hope that, yep. uh, yeah, hope that you've enjoyed our chat about is your leadership team too big? Um, so, my name's Brad Giles, and you can find me at evolutionpartners.com.au. Kevin, you can find at lawrenceandco.com. Uh, and we both produce weekly newsletters that you may find interesting. Of course, you can find this episode as well on YouTube. Uh, if you search the Growth Whisperers, of course, subscribe to that uh, as well if you see fit. Um, hope that you have yourself a great week and you've enjoyed our chat about is your leadership team too big? Look forward to chatting to you again next week. See you later. Have a great one. See you.